The owl is over the hen house. I repeat, the owl is over the hen house. Huh? Come in, come in. The coop flew over the chicken. The Sierra. Just hit the fan. I repeat, the Sierra hit the fan. Ew, yeah, it definitely did. Oh, gross. The road just crossed the chicken. The road crossed the chicken. Sweetie, can you come in? Dinner's ready. All right, so since we last talked about radios, I've picked up the old VX8DR. I think this is a pretty late model version, but I did have to buy it used because you uh, can't find these new anymore. They just they discontinued them about a year or two, probably about a year and a half ago. So I think this one's from 2016, from what I can tell, um, and it's in really, really good shape. Um, so Let's see here. The main feature that I look for when I'm looking for an EDC radio, obviously it's got to be name brand to a certain degree. I mean, some of the Baofengs and the Chinese radios are pretty reliable and pretty good, but this is just so thin and nice and lightweight. Um, I have my uh, Diamond uh, S, what is it? SRH 77, so an old, old 15 inch, 17 inch antenna on here that I've had forever. Um, or sometimes I'll run, if I'm really going lightweight, I'll put this uh, this MFJ little six inch job on there, and that's this actually works really good. This radio, uh, this antenna. Um, but the main thing I look for is um, well, the thing that I was looking for on this radio was that it was submersible. So we live in the Northwest, where there's a lot of rainstorms and that type of stuff. So having a weatherproof radio is uh, important if you're going to use it in any sort of emergency. Um, or uh, if it does hit the fan or whatever in that scenario, you're going to want something that uh, deals with bad weather as much as possible. This radio uh, will has a wide receive, so you can listen to, um, I mean, you can listen to shortwave if you want. Uh, bands here, oops. And you can literally just go through and listen to HF. I can put a long lead on the stock antenna and I can put a you know a long wire and I can listen to some different stuff. The other thing it has is kind of it's kind of nice is you can go um, you can go special bank right here. Is this right? No, let's get out of there real quick. Alright. A special bank. So this is they pro they pre-program in some like there's Finland, Russia I probably won't, I won't pick up anything with this short antenna on it, but most likely the one that you're going to hear is Voice of America, BBC, as you're probably going to hear Russia. Usually they have a pretty good propaganda machine going on. Random. I've also programmed in some uh, emergency services, so like let's just say, I'm just trying to see if I can see this. So this is a Clackamas uh, f uh, dispatch frequency, right? And so if something goes down, th that's going to be lit up. There's a Portland dispatch. There's uh, Oregon State Police. Th this doesn't do any trunking, but you can kind of, you can pretty much listen to all the emergency services frequencies on this radio, which is very, very important in an EDC, uh, you know, emergency radio. So can do that. The other thing that's really cool about this one is say I want to listen to this, right? I want to listen to Oregon State Police Dispatch um, and then I want to listen to another one. Well, this is this is on uh, Bank. This is on uh, Channel A right here, the top one. Channel B, I have, let's say, Mount Hood Repeater, right? And I want to listen to both of those at the same time. I hold this button down. Now I got both. And if I want to transmit on the bottom one, which I can't transmit on the uh, police frequencies anyways, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Um, so I will put it on that one to transmit on, which I won't do, it's illegal, unless I uh, identify. And then I can listen to both, listen on that one, and then maybe talk on that one. Or I can go on here and I can 
scan over and listen to another emergency frequency at the same time. Uh, who is this? So this is a uh, net that's going on right now. You can hear it. Hear people talking. Now I could I could respond and talk on this frequency no problem. So I could listen to something that's going on and then I can hear. Let's see if we can hear this at the same time. We can. Yep. See that? See that? So I'm listening to simul. I'm listening to two frequencies simultaneously. That's pretty nice. See that? That's ideal. That's really cool. So let's turn this off because it is noisy. Now, you're seeing something right now that's a little bit odd about this particular radio is the volume control. So you have your volume control here. you got to hold that down to turn it. it. bothers a lot of people, but let's say you lock in on this frequency. Let's turn this down. And you, you want to monitor that, and you, and you don't want to bump it. You're in an event. Uh, you're, uh, you're, you know, you're, you're helping somebody. Out. You, you just want to stay on that frequency. If you, if you want to stay there, super easy. Use your function key, and then hit your volume control. And now what that does is you'll see your volume thing flashing. It, now it turns it into just pure volume. And then if you want to lock this thing down, hit that once, and you're on lock. Now no, now none of these buttons do anything. And all you got is actually it locks down the volume too. So in this case, you can just set your set this to do volume. Um, if you want to turn it back, you simply hit your function, volume. Now I go back to frequencies. Um, so you kind of have to be aware of that little anomaly. A lot of people like that separate volume control up here. I do too, but um, due to the size, um, it's not possible. Um, so what else? Um, the other thing that this radio does that's unique uh, for an emergency radio, and this comes in handy if you're like mountain climbing, or you're away from cell towers, or you know, uh, a natural disaster, that type of stuff. Is it does APRS? So um, APRS is a automatic positioning system, and so what you can do is if you hit this menu button once, it'll put you into this. Now, if I had a GPS mounted on this thing, it would give our location and speed and direction and everything like that. I don't have one yet. Um, but it, but you can also listen. So I'm going to go over here. APRS is a f operates on a single frequency, and we'll find that frequency right now, right there. Hear that? Hear that squawk? Sounds like a modem, right? An old school modem. That's what it is. And it's squawking out just little bits of information. Now, if I go into here, menu a couple of times, what it's doing is it's picking up stations. You can see that just picked up right there. Um, it has the date. Let's see if it. Let's just wait for a second and see what it picks up. Also, you want to have a long antenna when you're doing this because it, it it's kind of sensitive. See that? There's one right there. IRLP node. To access it, you have to hit band to see what's in it. It's a fixed, a fixed power system, 98 miles away. Let's scroll down and see what it gives us. 20 feet. Gain three decibels. Power nine watts. So it's like a digipeter. 90 miles away and I think it's just showing that it's a fixed digipeter which is nice and I can look up that call sign and see exactly where it's at and what it's doing and I can go over here let's see what IRLP node so this is a fixed object it looks like it's uh, southwest of here with that where I am and it is 90 miles southwest let's see what it says there it talks about the repeater it's idle so it's just little, there's little bits of information that's being transmitted. Well, what this can do is it gives you the ability to transmit and receive packet data. And as a hobby, you can pick up stuff from satellites and pick up packet data and information from satellites or fixed objects or people. Uh, let's get out of this one right there. And you can hear that, and that's kind of neat. The other thing I can do, I'll show you right now, I can go to APRS Messaging. See that right there? I'm not going to click on one of those. That's a text message. So um, I can I can go in there and I can send a text message to another APRS user, ham radio operator, or I can send it. Um, it says SMS GTE, so I can send an SMS message to my cell phone or Mrs. D's phone or whatever, um, and it will use digital repeaters, digipeters 
and make its way to an internet connection and then it will output that to an SMS message. Um, if you are sending it to another APRS user who is another ham radio operator, it won't even need to do that. So it kind of makes its own network. So let's say you're, let's say you're hiking. I'm going to turn this modem off because it's kind of noisy. Hold it down, and then you have to do. I'm just going to mute the thing. You can make it to where it just beeps, and then it won't make that squawking noise. Um, oh, W7LT. So that's a repeater around here. See that? 14 miles away. Probably tells the frequency. Yeah, it tells your. So that's kind of cool. It's picking up stuff the whole time. So that gives you another capability. If your cell phone goes down, let's say you don't have, you're not near, you're you're hiking, you're up mountaineering, or or you're in a situation where you don't have any access to cell phone towers, you get one more kind of, you know, one more backup plan to send a message out to a loved one or somebody in your team or whatever you're going to do. So that's a really unique feature uh, for a really small radio, and I think that's really cool. Um, let me turn this off, actually. I'm going to turn off the modem. APRS modem. Off. It's going to make a bunch of racket. And we're going to turn it off that frequency. Okay. So, what else? Um, gosh, it's, a, it's such a cool radio. I've always liked this one. I've always wanted this radio. Um, the other thing is it has a stereo headphone jack right here. So, and the, the, actually the FM radio sounds phenomenal. It's very, very good sounding, but you can put in some earbuds, you know, some Apple earbuds, and then you can monitor these frequencies pretty discreetly. It looks like you're listening to your phone or your iPod. Um, that's kind of a nice feature if you want to just be aware of what's going on around you. Of course, on these you have things like, I'll show you, you got like the weather channel. You got to be in, you got to be in bank A, of course, up top, right there, whether you do that. Function. And then you got your special bank down here. And then if you want to switch through here, so you got your weather channels and you can scroll through those. There's one. See that? Cool. And then if you want to go to a different band, you hit the band button. It's nice about this radio. Let's say you're in a situation where you don't you don't know exactly what uh, actions going on and you want to listen to it the spectrum analyzer on this thing is really cool so let's go to VFO mode VFO memory that's this button right here you get to learn all these commands it's not this is not necessarily a, a easy to learn radio but once you kind of figure it out it's kind of cool um, so function 8 spectrum analyzer now watch this let's see if we can see what's going on here so that's scanning 50 channels at once well, it's moving across there actually but what you can do is if you don't know where the action is in your area you can literally just kind of scroll through here and see if anything comes up and you'll see if they'll spike I don't think there's a whole lot of action right now but let me but you can really see how it's checking out you can really kind of lock in on what's out there you know look at that it's pretty cool other thing that's important when you're looking for a radio a good solid emergency radio as compared to you know some of these earlier models you can put a speaker mic but it's got to go into this little side door and it's all kind of falling apart and the problem with this one is the speaker mic would actually fall out sometimes so I'd have to zip tie the cord to the antenna or whatever but if you want to run a speaker mic it's important to find something I think that actually has a positive locking scenario and in this case this is still when you pull that open it's still waterproof but check this out I got the speaker mic right here right and another this is a waterproof speaker mic everything is completely sealed the same way the radio is so that's kind of cool um, but it, th it threads in. I'll just, I'll just break it. So you thread it in like this. I'll show you. Put the arrow on there. And it plugs into this. And this is also used as your data connection port. So and you just screw this down. Like that. Really simple. And now that's not going to come out. It's not going to fall out on you when you're walking around. And you don't have to worry about it. 
So now you got a speaker mic and you can then hook that up and I can pull on that and it won't come out. That's really, really important, I think, for a good, solid radio. So um, that's my review of the VX8DR. Um, I can go in and show you guys more menu stuff, but honestly, I just kind of wanted to give you an overview of what what I look for in an everyday carry radio that I can throw in my pack, have enough robust features on there that I could actually get something done with it. And I've always liked this radio. I really like it. It's super fun um, as a hobby. And we're going to be doing some more experiments with this in the near future. I'm going to try to make my first satellite contact with this. And I think that might be a fun video for you guys to watch. So with that, seven threes. See you guys on the next one.